Hey, I'm Benoît Bigam and Mario Gilbert. We're from Saint Adrien, and you're listening to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by our mates over at Wiggle. This week, we're asking: Is your age actually a barrier to cycling performance? There is bad news. But it's also good. In cycling shorts, we're questioning whether cycling shorts are in fact the height of general fashion right now. And following the death of the legendary frame builder Dario Pegoretti, we celebrate some of his greatest works. We have had an unbelievable time here at the Vuelta Espana for stage one and two. We've had bus tours, talked to the pros, interviews, we've done a lot. We also got on president access to the man of the moment, Peter Sagan. So I can't wait for you guys to see all that. So stay tuned on the GCN channel. Back to you in the studio. This week in the world of cycling, the cyclocross season is now just around the corner. And what we learned is that even if you're one of the best riders in the world, you still need to practice. Oh, oh. Back on, back on. Yes, that's former World Junior Cyclocross Champion Jens Decker showing how it's not done in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, we also learned over the last seven days that a lot of you have got quite severe symptoms when it comes to an addiction towards cycling. Although we also found out it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, Zero Series MMX commenting and reminding us of the old adage, uh, teach your children to be addicted to cycling and they won't have any money left for drugs. <laughs> no, and some of you actually didn't know what you were addicted to. Nick W said he loves beer and if he didn't cycle, he'd be significantly heavier. Therefore, is he addicted to beer or biking? Mm. Well, I don't know the answer to that one. It's not the latter. No, fair enough. Now, we also learned this week that age is no barrier to cycling performance. Not if you're Alejandro Valverde, at any rate, because on Sunday, he became the second oldest rider to win a stage of the Grand Tour at the Vuelta a España at 38 years of age. Which reminded us of this photo from Twitter a couple of years ago, posted by Urban Thoughts. <laughs> that photo always makes me laugh. It's a good one. I think the reason it makes us laugh constantly is because you could believe it happening. You absolutely yeah. can. He's not the oldest winner of a stage at the Vuelta though, Valverde. Uh, that honour goes to Chris Horner, who won two stages at the age of 41, and with it, of course, the overall classification. Uh, but nevertheless, Valverde's win on on Sunday did get us thinking, is age a barrier to cycling performance? Mm. I mean, we clearly are hoping not at our age, aren't we? Right, well, I admit, your age. Our age, we're very similar ages, Si. <laughs> anyway, we're both hoping it's not a barrier to no, performance. you definitely hoping it's not, because if someone actually goes out and steals that KOM you were talking about in last week's show, you'd have no chance of getting it back, mate. Well, I'd be full of motivation. So, that's what we wanted to find out. If you are full of motivation and you're very dedicated and you do the hard work, can you continue to improve with age or are there some physiological reasons why you're inevitably eventually going to slow down? Well, the bad news first. Right. We consulted Professor Louis Passfield, our good mate, and he said, yes, age decline is clear and there is a lot of research to back it up. But he also said, that actually when that point happens is exceedingly variable and dependent on motivation. Oh, a bit of a ray of hope A there, glimmer, yeah, a glimmer. And although unfortunately, Si, things become quite clear again when you look at the example of professional cyclist victories. Uh, so we had, or well, there was 410,000 results from 6,000 different riders put into a graph, and this is what it looks like. Ouch. What can you take from that, Si? Well, thanks, Louis, for a start. Uh, clearly, What's that, 27 years old? You are almost literally over the hill. You are. That is terrifying, isn't it? Um, there is another glimmer of hope though. Uh, if you want to win a Grand Tour, you've got another few years. Uh, so the average age of a Giro winner from the last 10 years was just over 29. The average age of a Tour winner, almost bang on 30. And the Vuelta was also 29. But if you remove that Chris Horner outlier, things don't look so good because the average age there would be 17. <laughs> you joke, but yeah, probably not too far off no. the average age of that, is it? Um, now, more bad news, son. Oh. Your peak muscle mass is apparently just 24. What? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, to be fair, I think I've got exactly the same amount of muscle now that I had when I was 24. I eat none. <laughs> uh, VO2 max goes down by 15% every decade, which is depressing again. Yeah. Uh, I've got even worse news than that. You know that old theory where you get a bit more efficient as a cyclist as you get older? Yeah. Our friend, perhaps ex-friend now, 
Professor Louis Passwood, I'm going off very quickly at the moment, says that that's not true either. He said, in contrast to previous studies, which have shown that there might be an improvement in economy and efficiency with age, their research shows that actually economy and efficiency goes down. Bugger. Mm. No, it's not that bad. Firstly, all these studies relate to your maximum exercise capacity, not your current fitness level. So the fact is, unless you are at your absolute peak physical performance ceiling, you probably are able to make loads and loads of improvements. I think I'm quite well away from my ceiling at the moment. I think we can all see that, Dan. Yeah, all right. Uh, what was quite illuminating, though, in Passfield's study on this part was that the older, more experienced trained cyclists showed a much lesser reduction uh, in their performance at both higher and lower intensities. In fact, specifically what he said was that versus untrained athletes, these more experienced cyclists in the study were able to somewhat better maintain things such as VO2 max, maximum minute power output, and indeed their efficiency. Excellent news then. So effectively, the more you ride, the better you stay. That's it. Okay, and then there is one last positive to this as well, and that is factoring in your emotional intelligence. So basically your own ability to control emotions. A study published in Personality and Individual Differences, which is surely not a real journal, but apparently is called Emotional Intelligence Impact on Half Marathon Finish Times. Hmm. Well, what they found, the authors of this study, was that it had the biggest impact of anything on the predicted performance of half marathon runners. Uh, so if you had this emotional intelligence, you're better able to control your emotions, as I said. And what that means is that fatigue has less of an impact on you. Therefore, you can run harder for longer and so your performance is better. And that is over and above other factors, even such as the training you've done. It's remarkable, isn't it? So theoretically then, you'd think that instead of that gradual, inevitable decline in physical performance, you could potentially compensate for it by improvements in emotional intelligence, which you'd hope would continue to improve with age, you'd hope. Yeah, yeah another glimmer of hope for us both there. Absolutely, yeah. now at, at what, our age. <laughs> um, your age. At what point though, you can't compensate any more, I don't know, but perhaps you have some thoughts at home. So get involved in the comment section down below. This could be an interesting one. It could be. I'm going to be interested to read the comments this week, uh, as every week, of course. Uh, also going on to a slightly different subject on the research that Louis sent over to us. I did note that if you want to be a real prolific winner, you need to be born in January. Uh, Sai and I were born in June and August, respectively, which, uh, by coincidence, are kind of the, the months closest to being average. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't yeah. it, really? Mr. and Mr. Average. Uh, right. There is one last thing, actually, that Louis said, and apparently age is no barrier to talking about bikes. So that is without doubt. Can we improve at that? There's no doubt about that, is there? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't really do that part of the study. Some sad news from the world of cycling now. As we mentioned in our introduction, Dario Pegoretti, the legendary frame builder, has unfortunately passed away at the age of 62. He was a true master of this art form who both welded and painted his creations. He learned his trade from Luigino Milani before going on to pioneer the TIG welding process in bike frames, working in both steel and aluminium, knowledge that he actually passed on through his teaching. The performance of his frames was legendary as well. Such professionals as Pantani, Cipollini, Indurain and Stephen Roach all rode his bikes. But as well as the performance side of his frame sets, particularly in more recent times, he was as much known for the quite elaborate and amazing artwork that adorned his frame and forks. In fact, if you were lucky enough to commission a Pegoretti frame, you would be given the option of Chiavetta, which basically meant that Dario had carte blanche to do absolutely whatever he wanted with your frame set on that given day. So you received a completely unique bike. Yeah, he said he was influenced by things that he'd seen, things that he was listening to, music was a big part of his life, even his mood on a given day. So if he wasn't having the best of days, you could get loads of blacks on your bike, whereas if it was a great day, then there'd be loads of whites and yellows. He said even the weather could influence things. Mm. They were wide and varied, weren't they? So let's have a look at some of his best works. From all of us here at GCN, we would of course like to pass on our condolences to his family and friends. 
The legend that is Dario Pegoretti, though, will live on through his work. We're going to start cycling shorts with a warning. If you think that one day you might end up winning the Tour de France, you'd better have some fairly bland answers ready for when journalists ask seemingly innocuous questions. Otherwise, you might end up like Garrett Thomas. Mm. You see, what he seems to have done is kind of accidentally called for compulsory helmet <sighs> use amongst all cyclists. Uh, this was one answer given in an hour long interview, which was picked up as the main headline by a whole host of outlets. And then subsequently, he received quite a lot of angry responses from many cyclists, didn't he? At he which did. point he decided to try and backpedal, even using the hashtag on Twitter, calm down. Mistake number two right there, Garrett. You never tell someone to calm down because he pretty much always has the exact opposite response. In his defence, though, it's easy to see why he gave the answer he did, isn't it? Because to actually know the counter-arguments to compulsory helmet use, you kind of have to know specific stats, don't you? Rather than just personal experience, of which he has plenty because he falls off a lot. Yeah, actually, somebody did say that on, on Twitter. I definitely wear a helmet all the time if I crash as much as Geraint <laughs> Thomas. Uh, but he has another excuse as well, in that when we did the GCN show on this very subject, he was racing and winning the Tour de France, so you might have missed it. I'm not sure racing the Tour de France is an excuse for missing the GCN show, Dan. Well, no, not necessarily, but you know what the hotel Wi-Fi can be like sometimes. You probably couldn't watch it. That is a possible excuse if he'd run out of data as well. Uh, now, thinking of the Tour de France, actually, uh, you may remember Mark Cavendish was eliminated after a particularly brutal mountainous stage 10, and he's actually only raced for one day since then, and according to Het Lutster News, it's because he's got Epstein-Barr virus, which would make it the second time in two years, wouldn't it? So uh, I hope he gets well soon. Yeah, fingers crossed. I'd be interested to see actually what he does in 2019 because his contract is coming to an end at the end of this year with his current team, Dimension Data. Some people are even speculating about retirement. Oh, don't speculate about retirement to Cavendish. That's yeah. like telling him to calm down, isn't it? <laughs> yes, exactly. Red yeah, he'll be ball. back winning stage of the Tour this time next year. You can be guaranteed of that. I hope so. Uh, talking of bad news regarding contracts, there was bad news for an entire team on Monday, Aqua Blue Sport. They announced on Monday to the public and apparently to the rides and staff too, via Twitter, what? that they will be finishing at the end of this year. Ah, oh, that's a real shame, isn't it? Although, I'm always slightly suspicious when a team launches saying that it's going to be self-funding. I'm not sure that's ever worked in the history mm. of cycling, has it? But uh, anyway, some really talented riders out there now looking for contracts, including GCN's unofficial head of fashion, Adam Blythe. Well, I think he should dive straight into something else. Set up his own kit brand, which he'd be good at designing, wouldn't he? And yeah. go into some fixed gear racing on the road. Yeah, I he's got he... the shoes for it, for a start, hasn't he? Well, I think he'd be good at that. In all seriousness, though, a lot of rides and staff now without a job for 2019, yeah. as things stand. So we wish you all the best of luck in finding, well, your future career still. Absolutely. Uh, right, some good news now, shall we? Uh, the boss of Uber, Dara Korosahi, or a variation of that name, uh, went on record in an interview saying that they would be expanding their businesses into electric scooters and e-bikes, even, wait for it, if it hurts their profits. I'm not sure I believe that. But anyway, this did come from an interview that was in the Financial Times here in the UK. Uh, he basically said that individual modes of transport are far better in inner city areas, saying it's very inefficient to use a big hulk of metal of one tonne to transport one person 10 blocks. Yeah, they're right. And remember, of course, that they already have their jump e-bikes in eight US cities. Could they reverse the fortunes of all the other public hire brands that seem to be mired in problems at the moment? Like in my hometown of Bristol with those yellow bikes. Mm. Well, you, you're probably quite happy that those yellow bikes are mired in problems, aren't you? Well, I just I just wish people wouldn't leave them lying around. Yeah, he's been banging on about it this morning. Do you now use the bicycle then? I'm quite thankful I don't have to think about all those logistics with yeah, the hire bikes and stuff. What I have been thinking about over the last few days though and mulling over is whether cycling shorts are going to go from high fashion to high street fashion. You read that Cosmo Follison article as well? I did. Yeah. yeah, the author of the article, Lauren Adab, who stresses in fact that she is by no means a cyclist of any way, shape or form, uh, experimented with wearing cycling shorts for a week for a fashion perspective. And the results were quite illuminating. They were indeed. We shall read some out. She says, while initially I was doubtful that I could pull off the look, I mean, how could my butt possibly compare 
to Kim Kardashian, presumably, rather than us. To Kim Kardashian, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was hesitant about wearing bike shorts for one day, let alone for a week. They really did grow on me, which is a risk, I think, if you wear your cycle shorts <laughs> for a week nonstop. Uh, anyway, she then goes on to say, uh, they weren't too long, too skimpy, they fit amazingly well, and they were super easy to dress up. All you have to do is throw on some wedges or heels and you're done. Well, we could have told you that ages ago, yeah. Lauren, couldn't we? All yeah, of it? could have come. The wedges and heels? Yeah. You yeah. Done it. No, no. Mm, no, me neither. Uh, you would imagine that you need uh, cycling shorts without a chamois, though, for comfort whilst walking around for a week, surely? You would think so. But anyway, game on from me, I think, Dan. Right, let's finish cycling shorts with some other good news. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw this last week, Si, but the New Zealand Minister for Women, Julie Ann Genter, uh, she has had an appointment to go and get induced at the hospital and decided to ride there on her e-bike, where she gave birth to a very healthy baby boy. How incredible is that? <laughs> it's pretty incredible, yeah. isn't it? Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, Julie. Anne? Julianne? Was it Julianne? Yeah. Ju Julie, Julianne, congratulations. Sincerely. <clears throat> it's time now for our weekly inspiration, which is sponsored by our friends over at Wiggle. Your chance to win one of three voucher amounts, £50 for third, £75 for second, and £100 for first place. Uh, incidentally, Bella's written in. She was the winner of £50 on the very first weekly inspiration I remember segment. the photo well, Dan. I remember it well. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she got some spare look cleats and some spare tubes. Bit boring, but necessary, she says. Yeah. A Topic Mini Road Pump with gauge and a power bank to charge everything because she's going over to France from Australia to do some touring around there. Nice! Five weeks bike packing, bike packing. For, for the more yeah, fashionable amongst you. That's right. Me and Adam Blythe, both of us. Uh, right then, I wonder whether he's been bike packing. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> uh, right, okay, anyway. Weekly inspiration. In third place, we have got this one from James. Uh, sent in from the top of Mount Washington. Look at that. So Mount Washington, uh, for non-US viewers, is probably one of the toughest climbs in North America, isn't it? And there's an annual hill climb race at the top. He says that he completed it slowly, but he's gonna go faster next year. That, to my mind, is pretty inspiring. Yeah, this is the Mount Washington Auto Road Bicycle Hill Climb. Uh, so he went slow, but faster than last year, which is all you can ask for, isn't it? Onwards and upwards, uh, quite literally. Absolutely. Uh, in second place, cool. and winning 75 pounds of wiggle vouchers, is Greg, proving that you don't even need to have a bike in the picture for it to want you to make make you want to go out on your bike. Like Controversial, uh, but nevertheless, you'll agree with the photo. Uh, that is the Colle del Nivolette, we believe, uh, in the Italian Alps, and that has. A I've never ridden that, and that no, looks amazing. Doesn't it just look fantastic? Forty kilometers long, apparently, uh, according to Greg. But um, there we go. Mm. Right, it's worthy, time. Whether you. Uh, Second place. Worthy well, second place, yeah. So a worthy first place coming up for you now. Winner of 100 pounds of Wiggle vouchers this week is... It's Martin! Well done, Martin. With his Pinarello F8 in shot, and he's in Queenstown. Uh, or the Queenstown to Glen Orkey and Paradise Road, South Island, New Zealand. Look at that. We said it's a stunning winter's day in Queenstown. Uh, and while my wife was working and everyone else was skiing up in the mountains, I headed out uh, on the Glenorchy and Paradise Road. This road is everything that a bike magazine photo shoot is all about and nailed it with the weather too. Fair play. That is quite incredible, isn't The reflection it? is incredible, isn't it? I do like that photo, I must admit. Yeah. Well done, Steve. Very Steve. cool. Uh, yeah, we'll be in touch. We'll get those vouchers out too. And if you'd like to let us know what you spend them on, uh, please send us a message. You know what, that photo it makes me slightly less scared of winter right now. Yeah, that's very true. I'm at that point where I'm really just, you know, a little bit like, ah. Uh. Yeah, because we've had a decent summer, haven't we? It's gonna come up very quickly though. Bad. We had two uh, days of sun, would you believe? If you would like to get involved with a chance to win some vouchers next week, it, the hashtag on Instagram is GCN Inspiration, or you can head over to our uploader, which is in fact where our winner came from today. Uh, there's a link to that in the description down below. We've got an amazing giveaway for you this week. You might have been watching our City Cycling series, which has been going up of a Saturday of late. And if you have, you'll definitely have noticed the quite frankly jaw-dropping bikes that we've been riding. They are made by Schindelhauer, and would you believe it, they are giving one away, a Ludwig. Along with a Brooks saddle, which we'll get onto in a few moments' time. I actually had a go on the Schindelhauer for the first time, sans helmet, without a helmet, uh, for our show a couple of weeks ago. Yes, yeah. I did look cool, didn't I, Si? 
on that. On the bike, not because you didn't have a helmet on. No. Let's just... Ironically, I was in jeans going past people uh, fashionably wearing cycling shorts walking down the side of the road. <laughs> and nevertheless, back to this amazing giveaway. Uh, tell us more about the Schindelhauer bike to start with. Well, I'll be glad to, Dan. Uh, firstly, one of the big things is it's got, other than the fact that it looks amazingly cool, uh, is it's got a gate carbon belt drive. So there is no chain on this bike, which means effectively zero maintenance, and you won't get your trousers all oily. So no more tucking them into socks, mm. which is a bonus. Shall I tell you about the Brooks B17 saddle? Yeah, go on, mate. Uh, it's been around so since the 1890s, and for over a century now, it has been their best-selling model. Isn't it a thing of beauty? It is a thing of beauty. That's a good bit of trivia there, Dan. It is, indeed. Uh, now, if you'd like to be on a chance of winning this entire package, all you've got to do is click on the link which you will find in the description below this video. Uh, you can enter there, and entries will close on Monday the 3rd of September at 10 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, which means that we can then announce the winner on the GCN show the following day, which is one week from now. I don't think GMT exists anymore, does it? It does. Yeah, they don't call it G GMT Well, there's anymore. an alternative, isn't there, rather than not existing. Uh, anyway, talking of giveaways, <laughs> we're not giving these away, but they're a bit of a steal at the moment over at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, aren't they? Because they are 30% off in yeah. this colorway for this, the hoodie, and uh, for the t-shirt, which I've also actually got on underneath, and also for the sweater. Uh, so if you're interested in those, 30% uh, off is a decent discount, isn't it? It's one of my favorite ever colorways, that. I like it still too, I'm not sure why they're selling it off cheap. Anyway. Well, this week on the GCN Tech Show, we've got ourselves a new gravel bike. We've got research into titanium additive manufacturing. Mm, find out what all that's about in the tech show. Not to mention, we've got ourselves a one by time trial bike, Simon Richardson's favorite, of course. And also, we spotted a new 12-speed electronic group set. Yes, that's right, 12-speed electronic. So to get all the scope, make sure you tune in this Thursday for the GCN Tech Show. It's time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. I'm gonna start with something that Catherine sent in. Uh, she was off on a ride with people from her old school, which is kind of cool the other day, and uh, she spotted this, which is the school mascot for the John O'Groats and Land's End ride they're doing, complete with 3D printed helmets that the design technology department uh, created. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Garrett Thomas would be chuffed a bit for that. <laughs> Safety first for the bear. Uh, I've picked out one for you, Si, actually. Oh, Next, thanks, mate. Uh, on Twitter, at 24STB, has used bottle cage holders for his <laughs> wide, I was gonna say wide array of WD-40 cans, but they'd all look quite similar, in all honesty. Yeah. Uh, also an old school frame pump tape holder. Do you like that? Oh, yeah. I do. I mean, I'm with you. I'm not sure why you need three identical cans. Just well, like I'm one surprised. giant one on your on your belt. You and then should it's always be pouring score on it. What? I mean, back up. Back up in case they, you know, so they need a lot. Good point. Yeah, there's always a need. Right, uh, anyway, I've got one for you as well, mate, actually. Thanks, mate. Well, it's like a sharing show, this one, isn't it? This is from Eric Viner. Uh, he has created... Dun, 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 a chain keeper. Wow, we haven't had a chain keeper for ages. No, but you know what, mate? This is one of the ones that I like because effectively uh, it is showing just how kind of simple a chain keeper is. Uh, and there we go, look. So you just threw axle and uh, what was that? Yeah, and a then, empty and, thread lock spool. Yeah, it doesn't come much more simple. I'm, uh, to be honest, I think even I'm going to say a bodge for that. Not much effort's been made to make sure the spool fits really neatly. Yeah, but the that's why it, it? it works, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I guess so. Uh, Fraser Goodwin, um, he's found this rather interesting bike today. Uh, you'll have to pronounce that for me, Sai. <sighs> Ljubljana. 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 Uh, it is interesting. I've mangled the pronunciation, but the, the bike looks a bit mangled too, doesn't it? Well, it'd be good for wheelies, you'd think, wouldn't you? It's, <laughs> it's effectively like a unicycle with like a caster wheel at the front. There's bound to be some sort of story about this. There'll be a flood of comments saying, oh, I can't believe you didn't know about That's this. That's like an special... icon of city cycling. Yeah. Well, Has he got a Brooks saddle on? Looks like it. Yeah, it might well be. There we go. Uh, right then, Russ Allen sent in this one uh, from his travels in uh, Annecy. Um, it's a frame covered in mirror squares and with disco balls for valve caps. He suggested, is it one for John Travolta? Should we ask John? Go on then. Yeah. 
Yeah, another interesting response from old Travolta there. Yeah, I'd say that he was quite excited by that one, didn't you? We will finish with a good story. Uh, you might remember that Busy Kleister, uh, well, he, he, he kind of hacked his own <laughs> new whale sky outfit by just putting a toy whale on the back of his old sky jersey. It was pretty good. I think we said it was a hack, didn't we? I th yeah, we did. Well, there's the proof in the pudding, the screenshot that he put up on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Uh, more recently on Instagram, he's put up this. Team Sky have actually sent him with their own, their own personalised note a uh, a T-shirt, Sky T-shirt. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Sky Ocean Rescue. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? Oh, fantastic. Don't forget, hashtag is GCN Hack if you would like to submit your hacks and bodges for next week. Or once again, uh, you can upload it to the hack section of the uploader. I feel all warm and fuzzy, Dan. I'm not going to lie about that little gesture. That's amazing. You must have been chuffed to bits. I'm chuffed. I'm sure you will all remember last week's caption competition photo, but if you don't, here it is. Uh, we do have a winner, somebody that bettered my effort even, I would say. Uh, I'd Thomas say so. Abbott wrote in with Team Sky finding yet another marginal gain to make their riders come first. <laughs> well done to you, Thomas. Uh, you will receive a decent cowback water bottle if you send your address as a message on Facebook. Oh, right, okay, go on then. What about a photo for you to get your teeth into this week? Uh, this is our own James interviewing Peter Sagan, or so he thought. What do you think, Dan? Are you going to get us started on this one? Um, I'm bored. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, to be fair, you know, sometimes the simple ones are pretty good. Uh, anyway, if you think you can better Dan's effort, if you think you can win a GCN Camelback water bottle, then make sure you stick your caption in the comment section down below. It's as simple as that. Good luck. Three of our favourite comments from the last week coming up before we let you know what's coming up on the channel for the next seven days. Uh, starting with this underneath the video that you did, Sire of Ed Pratt. That went down really well, actually. Lots of likes for that. Ed has just come back from cycling around the world on a unicycle. I think they were liking my unicycling efforts, probably, Dan. Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. I liked it. <laughs> uh, this one, though, from Patrick Collins pointed out that that beer looked awfully watery. Yes. Uh, so I offered, to put it in context, uh, I offered to buy Ed a beer to say well done for cycling around the world in the unicycle for three and a half years. Uh, and uh, he actually elected to go for a latte and that was my lemonade. So yeah, both of us worst out from the beer option, but it was hot and you know. Anyway, uh, right, what about this one? Uh, underneath the top 11 riders to watch at the Vuelta, Daniel Smith points out, no Mikhail Kwiatkowski then. Uh, which no, does seem like an admission. Out of the top 11, didn't we? Although one of us did predict. In fact, we have an update of our predictions from the preview show. Yeah, go on. So, then. firstly, a couple of people predicted Vincenzo Nibia. That was Catherine and John. John. Yeah, he's almost five minutes down, so he's not going for the GC. <laughs> Rubbish. Uh, who did you go for again? Is it Richie Port? It's Richie Port. Yeah, and who else went for Richie Port? Ollie. Went for Richie Port. Ollie and Richard. Ollie and you, sorry. Went for Richie Port. Um, let me see how he's doing, Si. Let me scroll down here a little bit further. 167th currently going into stage four, 23 minutes and 17 seconds. I mean, the good news is he's still got nine riders behind him on, on GC, but yeah, it's not looking good. Yeah. However, Emma predicted Michal Kwiatkowski for the win. He's in the leader's jersey. I, before I knew who she was going to predict, said that we might all quit if she gets it right again. Um, it's early days It's not looking yet, mate. too good, is it? It's early days. We'll be absolutely fine. Um, by the way, that Mikhail Kwiatkowski thing, potentially, uh, James actually did say Mikhail Kwiatkowski, but given his pronunciation, <laughs> yes. Theo Gagan Hart, we yeah. might never have known. Uh, George right, and Hart's doing all right. Yeah, he is, yeah. Right then, underneath the top five basic skills for cyclists, uh, Darren Horrocks said, how many outtakes are there of Dan getting thrown completely clean over the bars before you got that smooth dismount? Mm. None, actually. I first completely time. honestly, I did that first time and I did it again, exactly the same. And I asked Oscar and James they wanted to have a go. They were pathetic. They really? got their back wheel about three inches off the ground. Wusses. Uh, anyway, along with my dismount, we've also learned this week uh, how to dismount properly from a penny th farthing, haven't we? Three, two, one, now. Well, that is remarkably impressive, actually, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad on a video, does it? But I'd imagine if you were on that penny farthing... Having been on a penny farthing, I can say that feels remarkably high. <laughs> yeah. But apparently, though, that is how they used to go down hills, because when you're sat on top of one, the handlebars effectively act like a safety belt, but meaning that if you then go over the bars, your legs are stuck, and so you fall forward on your face. So that was what they used to do. They used to take their feet off the pedals and put them around like that, so that if they hit something, they'd just fly clean over and they could start running. 
fascinating. <laughs> right, coming up on the channel this week. Someone out there um, might have enjoyed that little <laughs> nugget there. Yeah, let us know, know if you enjoyed that nugget in the comments. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, James is going to let you know how to save the best energy by hiding out on a ride. Uh, on Thursday, he's back again actually because he's done a tour of the Team Astana bus, or Astana, if you want to pronounce it like that. No one knows how he's going to pronounce it. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, probably uh, Bora Hansger or something. Uh, and on Friday, we've got Ask Teach Anything. Yeah, on Saturday, we go back to our City Cycling Series. This one is how to try and stay safe. On Sunday, we've got a retro versus modern. This one was super exciting to shoot. It's one of the most iconic looks in pro cycling. Then on Monday, it is, of course, the Racing News Show. And Tuesday, it's the GCN Show. Uh, oh, and as well, I've got to say, stay tuned for bonus content coming up from the Vuelta, both on GCN and also on the GCN Tech Channel, because John Cannings was over there rummaging through team buses left, right and centre. And also on our Facebook page, GCN Cycling, where we've got highlights and analysis after every stage. We do indeed. It's almost the end of the show now, but that means that you've still got Extreme Corner to come right now, in fact. Uh, this week, we are heading over to some more amazing tricks from Vittorio Brumotti. Impressive skills there, because yeah. that's going to seriously affect your bike handling when you're, what, a kilo lighter at the front end? Well, not to mention the penalty for getting it wrong. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't even know how you bail out with that front wheel, let alone what happens when your front forks strike. No. Tarmac it doesn't bear thinking or... about, does it? Yeah. What the Horrible. fork? Sorry. Yeah, so let's leave it there. Like, I think we should end the show, so yeah. I'm quite frankly. Yeah, I think uh, that's probably it, isn't it, for most quick people. Quick reminder that this colourway is on sale at 30% reduction over at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. You can find a link to that on the screen right now. Yeah, please also make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. And if you want to watch another video, why not check out that one with Ed Pratt unicycling around the world? And actually, uh, me having to go at pretty much what Brumotti was doing, just without half a bike waggling around in front of me. Slightly different level. Yeah, unicycling is definitely harder.